I received several questions about the use of metaphors throughout this course. A metaphor is a figure of speech, when we describe something by calling it something else. So it's an implicit comparison. If I call an enterprise a sinking ship, everyone will know it's doomed to fail. If parents call their kids' room a pigsty, they think it's a huge mess, like a pigsty. By the way, if they would actually say your room is so dirty it looks like a pigsty, that would officially be a simile, an explicit comparison, not a metaphor, which is, as I said, implicit. Quite some metaphors have passed in these last weeks. Fourth estate, hyperdermic needle, the media agenda, to name just a few. Why do scientists do this? Ask one student. It seems a bit strange to me that people who are trained in only talking about facts and things they can prove use all of these colorful expressions. And indeed we do. They are in fact quite important in scientific and non-scientific discussions about our field. That is why this is the first question I want to cover. Metaphors. Why do scholars use them? Well, the answer to this is quite simple, really. Because they are such a powerful communication device. Metaphors contain a wealth of information that most people immediately grasp, all buried beneath one simple concept. A good metaphor has a high level of shared connotation. In other words, most people will have the same associations. Most will understand that the hyperdermic needle theory has this name because it refers to directly injected messages that have an immediate effect and that the audience has no defense for. All of this associated meaning automatically pops up when you think of a hyperdermic needle. Therefore, metaphors are well suited to discuss complicated issues. And using metaphors saves a lot of time. Probably most people will understand what you mean with a metaphor intuitively and without further explanation. So if you are arguing a greater point and don't want to pause to explain each step on the way, metaphors are a useful tool. If, for instance, I compare the audience of a message to a group of spoon-fed babies, then everyone will understand that I don't mean that audience members are new to this world or that they are regarding this world with curious, ever-learning eyes. No, I'm saying that the audience is, first of all, not active, and secondly, not blocking information, and thirdly, not selecting channels or content, and fourthly, all experiencing communication and their food, which is fed to them, in the same way. If you think about it, a lot was communicated implicitly when I used this metaphor, and it took a lot more time to explain it. And that is exactly the reason why we use metaphors in science. This is all a bit abstract, of course. So in the next unit, I want to discuss some actual metaphors that we use in our field. And you will see how much information one metaphor actually contains.